Hello and welcome to to the final bell, the Geelong Cats podcast. We've got plenty of good things to talk about at the moment. The way the Cats are going, what a week of football they had last week. St Kilda and Port Adelaide, great win. Friday night footy against the top place, Port Adelaide. We're going to dissect a little bit of that. We're going to get to your questions. But as I get to do every single week, I better mention, first of all, we are brought to you by Panther Tyres. I do appreciate the support of all the guys at Panther Tyres. Can't forget them. Thank you to them. So if you need anything for your car, check out Panther Tyres. Welcome to Matthew Stokes and Scotty Gallen, boys. Hello. Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Scotty, I've taken a leaf out of your book. I've decided the best recording studio possible <laughs> is your car. Well, well, you anyway. again, Cameron. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> avoiding children. I'm well, just trying to get the best sound possible, Scotty. Well, Cameron, I nearly drove off the road this morning when I heard your dulcet tones in my vehicle. Can you explain this new career move to Matthew and I? No, I've been Are you using in... us as practice? <laughs> I'm filling in a bit of breakfast radio on K-Rock. I, I've been a weekly contributor to them. And Tom, Tommy, one of the hosts of the <laughs> breakfast show, is having a little week off. And I've jumped in the chair and... So you're a shock headed. jock? Uh, there's not too much shocking coming out of my mouth. I'm not going for the big headlines. Just trying to connect with the people of Geelong and Surf Coast <laughs> and the Ballerine Peninsula. Dan, your neck Folks, of the woods, Scotty. step in, please. Talk to <laughs> me. <laughs> Matt, Matthew, <laughs> you'd be listening. You'd be listening. All positive, please. Uh, look, I'm too busy worried about garbage trucks that time in the morning, Cameron, <laughs> with uh, Wilbur, but... Um, Look, we all got to do what we have to do, Cameron. Um, you've just done a, a $1 million renovation to your house. We've got to pay the bills. So I don't hold, I don't hold no grudges. Do what you do. Um, just maybe remember your friends, me and Scotty. If you, uh, when you hit the big time. The... Sorry, who are you both? What, what, what are your names again? <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk some footy. We're going to talk some good footy in a second. As I said, we'll get the questions. But, uh, what a night it was. Friday night, top place Port Adelaide taking on the third place Cats. After a great win against the Saints, I thought, oh, is there going to be a little letdown? Smash the Saints. What are Port going to throw at us? Just domination from start to finish. And one man in particular who completely dominated the game, Tom Hawkins. Stokes, he was a superb performance. I mean, just give it to Hawkey when in doubt. Um, he actually dominated the game. I've never seen... Uh, obviously, we've seen some amazing games from over the years, but to dominate a, a game on the big stage on a Friday night footy like we spoke about last week, to absolutely take them to the cleaners and just everything he did turn to gold was an incredible performance. I think we had a lot of... Uh, a lot of players who just contributed their part, which is why we were so successful in on ripping Port apart. But to have the week that we had against the two, you know, two probably informed teams of the competition and to make them both look second rate was pretty positive and a, a great, great way to lead into the weekend, Cameron. How? Tell me how. Because Tom dominated, so credit to him, but also credit to others on the field. How did he get one-on-ones... So often. Was it ball movement? Was it the forward line structure? What was it? I'm not too sure. I mean, if Kenny had any hair, they would, he would have pulled it out. <laughs> um, but I think what it was, the movement from the smalls um, and the dangerous of, you know, Gary Rowan back in, uh, back in form really creates danger to opposition's defenders. So for him to be able to be really dangerous in the forward line, moving and and taking um, and creating space for Hawkey was the reason why he was able to play his one on ones and, and destroy his opposition. Scotland, what did you take from the game? Was that a a little sign, as we've already seen a little bit? The Cats, uh, well, I'm going to say best two teams in the competition, them and West Coast. Or was Port Adelaide, after a massive game against Richmond, having a quiet, flatter night? Or was oh, the Cats making a big statement? Well, Port, it was well known they built up the game against Richmond on their home deck a few days earlier as a big game. Yeah, maybe they had a bit of a lull, but the way Geelong's system and the defensively, I, I've never seen them play better for a while. I know last year they were, what, we won the first 12 games or something, but the system and the way it's working at the moment with 
it's not all just Patrick Dangerfield, Joel Selwood. I know it's Tomahawks in rare form, but I just think overall everyone's contributing and they all know what they're doing, which shines out so much because there's so many teams that are all over the place at the moment. And again, the contribution from a couple of guys we've pumped up a little bit lately. Cam Guthrie, superb oh. again. Sam Menegola, really good again. And, and as you said, that Mark Witzard's off the wing, which... Thank you. Uh, Thank I you. Didn't. Well, no, I'm still not sold totally on that one, but I see what they're doing with supporting defenders and Harry and Hendo are working nicely together with yeah. Jack Henry and that. It's an even contribution. That's what's getting me most excited. Oh, yeah. Patrick Dangerfield was very good on well, Friday. Well, I like that he decided, right, I'm going to turn it on tonight. If you know what I mean? Like, he's that good that he went to oh, another level, which helped everything. Yeah, but, but that wasn't – that's not – a, it's not why they won. I know what you mean. No, I, I thought he was only uh, not only he was good. He wasn't. It wasn't a Patrick Dangerfield off the charts game. No, he, no, I agree with that. His kicking was a bit off in the first half. It, it wasn't reliant on him turning up and having an absolute no, monster forty that. touches and four goals. He was a valuable contributor, like a big group of players, to an incredibly impressive display. Mm. That type of balance is what has got me most excited about them. Now, keeping it for the next and not falling into old traps with selection, Cameron, is the key for later in the season. True, but on selection a little bit. Uh, we're not going to jump off the game straight away, but it is Adelaide Crows this week and oh, a big break. Just, They've been coming off four-day breaks. You, you play me and Stokesy this week. You just, we'll just get the, <laughs> we'll drive over there. We'll still win. Hang on, hang on, hang on. They're still an AFL team. They haven't been playing too badly the last two weeks. Matthew, weekend. they are horrendous. Uh, that's a very harsh word, Scott Gullen. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be... You, all you do is take the foot off the pedal for a little bit on a, any team in the AFL, regardless of how horrendous they are. <laughs> and we, we lose one game and then we're back in the, the mix for the, the top four. Um, but you've got to be smart. You've played four games in 13 days. You do have to think of the bigger picture. You do have to think. Uh, there, there is a. I think there is a little bit of a mixture of both that can work with each other, Scotty. That's why I love playing with him, Scotty. <laughs> He's not going to take the foot off the throat. He's the voice of reason. Quality football, quality approach every single time. With a balance, a smart balance of maybe if some players are a bit banged up, you take that opportunity. But Stokesy, as always, Scotty, just putting you back and saying, hang on a second, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I yeah. just call it like, a, like it is, Cameron. It's a buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have some good inclusions. We might have Luke Dowhouse come in. Um, yes. You know, we might we might once and for all see uh -huh. our boy. Don't say it. Seriously. It is Indigenous round, Scotty. So bloody put him in, please. He's in the paper. He's alive. I've got pictures of him on the front page. Yeah. Well, well Stokesy, well. it is it is Sir Doug Nichols round. Indigenous yep. round. Uh, the G Lang game, if I pronounce that correctly. That is correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, what we do is obviously it's all about bringing culture to our um, our players and also to the community that we, we work with really closely. Um, we interact with them for weeks leading into the game in normal times, like last year. Um, and then it's a, a celebration of the community of Geelong um, on, the, on the game day. And brought to you by Barn Water. We couldn't do it without Barn Water. So we appreciate all the support and love they give to us. But... Um, it's a little bit different this year. Um, there's a lot going on when it comes to the Sir Doug round. Um, obviously, we've got the Free to Fly campaign. Um, What's happening with that, Stokesy? Well, a um, company owns the rights. How did that happen? The yeah, Wham Clothing has brought the the rights to the the, the flag. Uh, so if anyone wants to use it and makes money off it, you have to pay royalties, and the AFL is oh. no different. So the AFL were um, obviously aren't coming to the party when it comes to paying. The, the white company for the Aboriginal flag, right? So um, it is a bit of a it, it is a bit of a, a balls up to be honest. Um, it's a political nightmare um, and a flag that obviously means so much to to our people. But to not be able to display it on the ground or on our jumpers for Sir Doug Round is is very disappointing. Stokesy, I've heard uh, Michael Long's come out strongly. Um, even Brandon Parfitt's had a had a say on it. Um, is is what is being asked when you say free the flag and the issue, is it with the company that's got the rights and, or the fact that they just shouldn't have the rights to a flag that means so much to so many people? I think they shouldn't have the rights to it. And I think it's time that the government sort of 
um, intervened in this because it's gone to a stage now where it's hurt a lot of people um, and a lot of companies who build the foundations of what who they are and what they do on the back of that flag. And I think um, it, it, when you look at it, it's very disrespectful um, to have to pay royalty rights to a, a white company um, for the Aboriginal flag. Um, and I think um, common sense will prevail eventually, but it's time that our political um, leaders in the Aboriginal space really stand up and take ownership of this because the government should step in and, and take this rights off of this company as soon as possible for everyone concerned. Is the only way that that happens though is, is if the government buys the rights off the oh, company that owns it? I think so. Um, look, to be honest, like, yeah, I think it, it's going to have to be a transaction between the company and, and, and the government. Um, but the government also too use this flag a hell of a lot. Um, in everything they do, um, on the back, of, on the bottom of their signatures, when it comes to government emails, um, you know. So, I don't think it'd be that big of a transaction, and I think they have to do the right thing. I think eventually um, they will have no reason to use the flag if we don't buy the rights off them ASAP. Well, let's hope that happens, and obviously, it is an important round. And I know you joked about it, but is there anything in Nakai Cockatoo? playing this week and the fact that it does coincide with Indigenous round? I think Scotty is a little bit of a romantic when it comes to these type of things, but um, what I would say is that one thing Scotty always does is put um, the team before any individual um, um, feels or stories or emotion. Um, I think that's one of the good things I do like about Scotty and the way he approaches it. It's always about the team first. Um, so if we can somehow bring him into the team. If it wasn't all for such a long break and, um, you know, we have, you know, Luke Darehouse, I think, um, Josh Jenkins is looking really good. Sav is back. Quentin Knuckle got through some game time. I think there wasn't an array of players on the sidelines ready to come in. I think Cocky would come in, but I think at the moment, um, I just don't see a spot. I would love it. Um, and I think he needs to play, but I can understand the fact that from a, a coaching perspective, it's a good feel good story. It is to dug around Aboriginal Indigenous round, but at the same time, the team comes first. Um, but if he's going to be any part of this state, we're running out of weeks. We've only got about, what, five weeks left? If he's going to be a part and he's fit, I mean, we gather he's been training and yep. playing these scratch matches. What, what's a better time? What, three weeks? I mean, and they are playing the last team. I know I'm joking when we say you've got to take it seriously, but there's never a better opportunity to have a look at him, surely. Oh, I, I agree with you, Scott. You're um, preaching to the choir here, but um, maybe the next set of... Maybe they, don't, they know something that we don't with the next set of games coming up. I mean, obviously, it's going to be another footy festival and, and games mm. into a short amount of time. So maybe it's time in, in one of those games where we do need to rest players before the back end of the season that we, we, we slide them in then. But I'm with you, Scott. A, if I was a coach, I'd be putting him in this week and seeing what, we, what he's got. It's a good point you made there, though, Stokesy. So this is a nine-day break, uh, which effectively is, given what they've been through, is almost a rest before Adelaide. So players are probably going to feel reasonably good coming into the Adelaide game. There's not the, it's not necessary to rest them. If with this next crammed fixture where it's tight again before round 18, returning back to a normal weekend, maybe the coaches are thinking, well, we are going to rest a, a danger field here, a... Gary Rowan there, whatever it might be. And that's, we've got the, the circle around that one. That's when the Kai is going to play that game because we're going to need to rest. Whereas this is effectively a rest, the, the nine days off. I don't know. I'm just, just guessing. Sam maybe, Simpson. Sorry, maybe Sam. the game, the flying into Adelaide Oval and playing and then flying back, maybe it wouldn't be great for him. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're right to play, for footy, you're right to play regardless of whether you have to travel and play and then travel back to, to the home. Yeah, good call. Sam Simpson comes out, unfortunately. Oh, hamstring that's, injury. That's unlucky. Jeez, he was playing well. He was playing terrific footy. He's smart. He's good Correct. in the contest. And gee, he puts a lot of work on off the ball as well with his defensive work and his running. That's that's a blow for them. So who He's been think? one of the revelations this year. I mean, he's... Dalhouse for him? Yeah, that's the obvious one. And then so we does, think about... Does the Sava come in? Well, they've, you know, he had his week off for injury-wise, but they've elected not to go with him. And we talked about Hawke and the forward line. 
certainly worked impressively. I mean, maybe Reese Stanley needs a rest. That could be the start. I mean, I'd play a start, but he has to be in the team when, when the whips are cracking in the year. A start is there, so I'd get him back in. Jack Stephen back in, Stokesy this week. Yeah, I think so. I think you put him back in, um, but at the same time, there is no need to anymore. I mean, there was a. a I thought there was a really a, a thirst to want to play him to be able to just expose him to AFL games. Um, but our our team's travelling amazing at the moment. So if you disrupt the um, the, the field that we already have in that midfield, um, I think we still need someone that can break the lines and give us a little bit something different to what everyone else brings to the table in that midfield group. Um, but with Isava, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm watching a lot is that maybe it's his lead, leading patterns of him seeing the game of where he leads to or what he sees in front of him because without being disrespectful to Isava and I love the big sexy man, that the space has opened up a hell of a lot for Hawkey and Gary Rowan to be able to move into um, since he's been out of the team. Um, so that's yeah. something that I think the, the coaching staff will probably look at in a sense of, okay, so we've got a, a, a really dangerous forward group at the moment because Asaba has been out. He's in our best 22, no doubt about that. But at the moment, uh, we're looking more dangerous because the space is open without people leading back and forward into people's spaces. That's uh, a good point. It's a very good point. I... I... There's still a feel from me that we are a better balanced team when Patrick Dangerfield's forward as well. Yeah. Because yeah. a couple of times again and on the weekend, now he was terrific through the middle of the ground. We know he can do that. When Tom got one-on-ones and they showed the vision from behind the goals and Danger's opponent, and I think it was McKenzie occasionally, or might have even been Jonas, was just anchored to Dangerfield. Mm-hmm. So worried about leaving him, which left Hawk one-on-one with Clurry, outbodied Mark, great. If that's not Dangerfield, if that's someone else, I think that person potentially chooses to leave his opponent and say, oh, hang on a second. Clurry's one out on Hawkins. I'll come over the top third man up. Dangerfield is a threat himself, but he makes the others more isolated and more dangerous by even being in that forward line. So the balance feels better with him there. It shows you um, also, too, with the way that Hawkey was able to get one-on-one isolation, it gives you a greater, more respect for our defenders of how they never let each other out to drive. We always have a Tom <laughs> Schiff, we always have a, um, the old man Harry Taylor coming across. I mean, unbelievable. he's been unbelievable the last couple of weeks. He's really shown that, you know, I think it is his last year, but geez, he's still playing at a high clip. Even Lockie Henderson, I mean, I was one to say we don't, I can't play, we can't play both of them in the team together. Yeah, yeah. Moment, I may have said that. I, I think wrong. we all said that. So no <laughs> one said that. Um, I, I think at the moment it's working because they're not letting each other out to dry. They're helping each other, and the defense, the, the, our defense is looking so much, so much like a team within the team, um, and the passion and care they have for each other is incredible. And that probably stems from having Matty Scarlett as their coach. And our I, man, I, the shark, he put, he put Robbie Gray to sleep. Oh, he puts them all brilliant. to sleep, doesn't he? The shark. The balance of him and Jed Buse both yeah. having the ability to play. And they're both bigger guys too. So even if it's a... Robbie Gray is a small player, but he plays quite strong and big and can go mm. overhead. But he's lining up against O'Connor or Buse, and it's their big guys as well and, and really strong overhead. Um, I almost felt sorry for Charlie Dixon on Friday night. <laughs> I think the best situation he ever got himself in was a two-on-one. It was constantly three, four guys all into him, and Reece Stanley was there. He had no hope. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a clinic that our backline put on. on the, I, I think he touched the ball three times for the night. Yeah, none to none to half time. I think, and was, it got uh, kicked to him like fifty-five times. <laughs> Now, uh, we've got to take a break because we want to get to some fan questions. We don't have a guest this week, unfortunately, because uh, the guys are training hard and working hard within their hubs. And uh, I'm sure catching up with the families now that they've been allowed back in there and uh, mucking around with the kids and everything they're doing. Before we do take a break, it's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Kiza. If you're a GMHBA member with Extras Cover, you can access telehealth, or in-centre physio from the team at Kiza with no out-of-pocket expenses up to up to your annual limits until September 30. Waiting periods and sub-limit supply. Search GMHBA Kiza for details and stay healthier at home. 
We will be back in just a second with all of your questions. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell brought to you by Panther Tires. Appreciate the support of the guys from Panther Tires. We're going to get to your questions. We do really appreciate all of our listeners for listening, first of all, but also for sending in the questions. We love to know what you're thinking, what you want to know about. Before we do, don't forget digital is in Deakin University's DNA with 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, loved. Study online at Deakin. Uh, the fans out there, guys, they, uh, they want to know all the big questions, the important stuff. And there's one right off the top from Mark. It's the big one. I think we're all going to agree on it, but I'm going to put it out there. If you are Stephen Wells, and I would assume that would include Simon Lloyd as well, do you give Tom Hawkins a new two-year contract? Easily. I give him three if he wanted four, maybe. Maybe even five. <laughs> I mean, he's getting better with that. I mean, you guys played with the great man. He was 2011 at his breakout. He battled with his weight because he's back and all that sort of stuff. But he's going as good as I've ever seen him at, what is he, 32? 32 years old. There is no question, Matthew. It's a two-year, isn't it? Minimum. Oh. Scotty's calling for a five-year, but it's a two-year minimum. I would have thought two years maximum, Cameron. <laughs> maximum? I think so. No, You're I agree a very with you, hard list manager. Uh, being I, serious, I, I agree. Two years is right. Two years, um, and he deserves it. I think if, he, um, if you're 32 and getting a two-year deal, that means you're on, you're on top of your game. And he's definitely on top of his game, and he deserves his two years. Um, you know, there could be clauses in there for the third. But I think right now in the landscape of the game, um, with the salary caps and soft caps all having a hit, yeah. you just don't know. Um, but when you do have someone like a hawkey around, you keep on to you keep hold of them as long as you can. Well, Gee, I hope he wins. Oh yeah. I hope he wins the Coleman though. He's never won one. We know that. He's so unselfish, which we get. But it'd just be great to have that little, you know, just next to the name, one a Coleman. Yes, well, a Coleman in a premiership year, you can yeah. sign a five year deal then if you like, uh, <laughs> Tommy. But on, on with you, Stokesy. I think two years is right. Um, when clubs are crying out for a key forward as as dominant as Tom. But even when he's not, he doesn't have to kick six every single game. Let's hope no. he does. But he's, the fact that he draws often two or three to him, that leaves somebody else at ground level. He is a competitor. He's got all of that. Is there any chance, Stokesy, with your ruthless list management decisions, <laughs> that it's a one-year plus triggers for the second year or no. it's just a straight up to no. no I think he I think and I think we've been through a lot with our group of players who have come through this time this time I think it's a little bit different when it comes to key positions I don't, I don't think he's ever had any injury issues in the last couple of years to question whether he's um, be able to get through that two years I think he's an ultimate professional um, he's one of the best guys I have at a footy club so to alleviate any of that doubt um, for him to think about. And Hawkey would never go anywhere. Hawkey is a through-and-through draw. Yeah. Um, I, I, I reward him for two years. There's been a lot of talk about over the years of when once we got to 30, there was one-year deals that we all got. Um, no one ever got. I think time to change. And I think Hawkey's a little bit different to everyone else that's gone through. I think he's, he's probably our most, he is our most important player um, for our structure. So he, he gets two years for sure. And a great point you make, even if he started to tail off in the back end of his second year of that deal, a little bit, just, just, just because of his body, he is one of the most incredible people to have around your football club anyway. It's not like he's a difficult personality. It's not like he'll uh, refuse to put time into young forwards. He, he'll be working with a Sava. He'll be just a great person to have around the club. So if his form suffered by 10% in the back end of his second year, he makes up for that in what he does around the club. So I agree with you, Stokesy. I like where your head is at. Thank you for your question, Mark. Colo asks, what do you think we'll get out of the skipper this year? I think Colo, we get what we get, have always got from Joel. Maybe, maybe he's not the absolute top end Joel Selwood of half a dozen years ago, where he is just a phenomenon, but he is a 
the, one of the most fierce competitors. He's a beautiful ball user. His leadership and settling nature on the field, his, his ability in key moments to still have an influence, are going to be there right to the end of this season. Now, we're talking about body stokes here. Eventually, Sal's body is going to be so banged up one day, it will affect him. But right now, even watching him the last couple of games, he, he's not dominant, but he's still covering the ground well and looking as solid and as good as ever. He, um, he's going to, when he's finished his career, he's obviously going to use our um, sponsor a lot, I would have thought, um, at the end of his career. He's going to be that banged up. But what I like this, this year compared to the last couple of years is that he's had such a weight on his shoulders during the home and away that come to the finals, he just looks like he's exhausted. Where this year he's been able to sort of not float because he never floats, but be able to just get through games without having to have the whole club on his on his back. Yeah. So I think the fresher season that he's had, not having to have to have the workload he's had in previous years for the last sixteen years or whatever, how long he's played for, come that week one of finals, I don't think there's going to be a more important person or person has more impact on our games than our captain and Joel Sewell. So I think I think this is. It's been perfect lead up for him in the sense of the progression of the season and how it's played out for also. And you can see the way that the Cats have handled hub life and, and the unknown nature of this season. It's very settled because of a man like Joel being in charge of that team. So thanks for your question, Colo. Mel asks, of the remaining games this season, how much will the team be focusing on the Richmond game? Stokesy. How much did you cast your eyes towards a game in the future when you knew there was a monster coming up or you owed that team or you, yeah, you'd had a loss to them in a crucial game last year? Could you narrow your focus to the game at hand or I, did you have one eye on three or four weeks away? I think you always have. I'd be lying if I didn't ever think that I had an eye on Hawthorne um, <laughs> or playing St Kilda back in those early days. Um, but I think once, as a professional, I think... Once you get to the Friday, Saturday leading to the game, your focus is solely on that. But you always do have that one little corner of your eye um, on those games. So, um, and also, too, looking through the schedule of what the next five or six weeks looks like, I mean, you'd just be wanting to get through and not wanting to be rested for that Richmond game. It's the final it's, game, isn't it? Uh, second last game, I reckon. I think round 18 is against the... I've gone blank. Against the Bombers, I think. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, round I mean, 18, the Cats play... Cats play the Swans, sorry, in round 18. So, round 17 is the Tigers game. Because, you know, there's going to be top four, you know, shuffling. You're going to have to put yourself in the right spot. You know, we've seen in recent years where Geelong has made a couple of errors and you got on the wrong side of the finals make-up and it comes back and haunts you. So, it be very important. Is the pre-finals buy going to happen, Scotty? I don't think so. I, I'm, that's without any knowledge, but I, I don't think so. I got the well, impression the way Gil was talking last week that it's still he wants one, does he? Yeah, I think just why he, he's loved when you're trying to finish. Really? Well, he's loved the idea of the previous couple of final series, having the best players available and having people rested and and yeah, primed. We're trying to get this thing over and done with, aren't we? We can why string it out another week. Well, why not? Then we have to go to our boring lives without any enjoyment. No, we go to the spring <laughs> carnival and we start punting even more than we do now. That's we don't punt, Scott. It's bad for the... We gamble um, responsibly. Exactly. So it's okay. You I think will I, uh, have them overlap, Scotty, this year. It'll be your heaven. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think um, one of the interesting things I think to play out for this season is how the final system works and how that plays out. I mean, like you said, Scotty, if we get a, a third and a fourth spot and we have to travel in and out of Adelaide in a day to play mm. the final. They're big ramifications, whether it's got you, I doubt they would make you travel from the Gold Coast to the West Coast and play a game. But I think, you, I think you've seen uh, Port handle it okay, but also on the weekend when they had to travel to the Gold Coast and back, um, you know, it can be a bit of a, an effect on your performance in the game. I wonder if wherever that grand final will be, that the prelim finals will be locked in that state. If it's at the Gabba, the granny, one, one prelim at Metricon, one at the Gabba, regardless of 
who deserves the home well, prelims. I think the WA Premier is making it very clear that he's not going. Clubs aren't going to be able to fly in and out, so you can't have a prelim in Perth. You just can't. No, true. Vinny asks our last question: Who would it be worse for the Cats to lose for the rest of the year, Blitz or Danger? Who? Oh, oh, wow! Blitz Arves or Danger Fear? I'll say Danger because Blitz, as good as he is, there is backup in that position, whereas Danger influences games in different areas of the ground. Stokesy, can I add to Vinny's question? Blitz, Dangerfield, or Hawkins? Who oh. would be worse to lose? Hawkins by a mile. I Hawkins think... by a mile. <laughs> by an absolute mile. He's our most important um, hands down. Well, or Blitz. I think Danger... A last year's prelim. Yeah, I think true. Danger just gives you something a little bit different. I think, um, obviously, going forward, like you said before, Cameron, about the space and being able to keep your defender accountable. Um, I think that play is a big hand on us playing well. And I just think that he's, he's up is a lot bigger. Blitz is just a solid contributor, one of the best at that. But his ceiling is nowhere near as high as Danger's. Yeah, that's, that's a fair assessment. I can't disagree with that. I think Blitz's ability to go back, if a key forward, Charlie Dixon, I know he wasn't good the other night, but if he got a hold of us in a final, Blitz could go back there and do that job. His structure and what he provided on Friday night on the wing was outstanding. Uh, but you're right, that, that's the height of the ceiling for Dangerfield. What if, what if it is an arm wrestle and it's a tight game? Hawkins is playing good footy. Blitz is playing good footy. Stewart, all the good players are playing well, but so are the opposition. Dangerfield goes into the middle for a five-minute burst or goes forward for a five-minute burst and just changes the course of the game. That's what he does possess. So I'd agree with both of you in that, which is rare to agree <laughs> Who with would both. be number four on that list if we added another one? You can't lose Selwood. I don't care if you say he's, his output's not, you know, a elite, 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 elite like he was. Selwood Duncan career. for me. Very close, both of you. Uh, it's, it's, if Selwood doesn't play in big mm. finals, it's just a little less calm. Yeah, and a little less yep. controlled, and a little just those young guys or the guys who've played outstanding seasons, Guthrie, Menegol, or all of these, are just looking around a little bit more, going, oh, oh, "Oh, where's Joel? Like, where's the calmness? Where's the control in this team?" And not just the calmness with the playing race. I think what Sel brings to a lot different to anyone else in our club is that the being able to be the glue for the football club itself, being able to keep Scotty sort of calm and the coaching staff. Um, aligned to the playing group and making sure that they're both on the same page and also to being able to work with Lloydy in the footy department on on the whole program and, and how that looks. I don't think there's anyone that can have an influence like Selsley does at our football club. So he's the glue and he's the calmness of the whole group minds in the playing group. So I definitely agree with that, Cameron. And the opposition know he's around, the great man. <laughs> oh, he can, he can man. fall on him if he has to awkwardly. <laughs> Uh, you got to do a little bit of that. Hey, we're we're going to wrap it up. Um, just hey, one quick question, question though, Scotty. I don't want to go jump ahead to 2021 too quickly. Next season, is there a bit of talk that we might have a late start or might have a bit of crazy hub life again? Or what's the early indication? There's many options being considered, but May start is being thrown around and possibly because they like this footy on every night, maybe in school holidays, they might have a, hub in Queensland, sending one, everyone up there again. Hopefully it's not quarantined then and just do a bit of replicate what we've done. Just a little patch of mad footy, you know, 30 days, 30 games or something. Because it's been a massive success it, for TV. It has. You do have a captive audience right now. No one can go anywhere. So True. they're going to be home and watch it and they can't go to the footy. Um, obviously the aim is to have crowds. What's yeah. the early indication? How likely? We don't know, but it's probably no, a stupid question. I mean, surely it every by day. the start of next season, you would, you know, there's vaccines coming. You'd think we'd be able to have crowds next year. Good. I think, Let's there's, hope. A lot, I think there's a lot of water going to bridge, Cameron, when the sense of, I think even clubs don't even know what their makeup of their footy departments are. The AFL haven't even worked out their structure, what they're doing. Um, so to make decisions on the future when they haven't even sort of figured out where the direction of their own brand and their own clubs are, are at, I think it'd be a really um, 
unprofessional approach to be able to do that. I think clubs are in such a bind at the moment because of the, the spend. To lose $3 million on your soft cap to try and figure out how that all works. Um, and I think we've seen this year how um, an impact it can have on the game when you don't be able to have the time into your place. The, the skill level can drop um, and the, the level of productive uh, pro, you know, out there in the game can, can suffer quickly. So I think there's a lot to happen before we even get to next year. Yeah, good call, Stoxy. I've jumped ahead too quickly there. I won't do that again, Stoxy. <laughs> See, Scotty, just, just gives me a little clip back into the line yeah. and I'm ready to go. He's been up too early. That's why I've been on K-Rock all morning. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, it, was uh, it is fantastic talking to you both. Scotty's got Geelong resting the entire team this week. And Correct. both him and Stoxy are playing. Play cocky. Play written off cocky. the Crows. Fortunately, Stoxy, the voice of reason, has said it is still an AFL team and you need to respect the game. Prepare no. and be ready to play Scotland. Play cocky. <laughs> I'm going to ban. Um, anyway. Good chat with you both. Enjoy the rest of the day. Make sure you're listening to K-Rock tomorrow. I'll give you both a shout out. <laughs> give me a smell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stokesy. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you to all of our listeners out there. Thanks for sending the questions in. We will be back again next week. The Cats taking on the Crows this Sunday. I think it's a, is it a one o'clock game? Is that right? Yes, yes. Early game. Early game. So nice. Just kick back on Sunday afternoon. Uh, just checking the time. It is a one o five game. Bit of a random time there. So sit back, enjoy that. Hopefully, Mackay Cockatoo does play, and the Cats have another good win. We'll talk to you next week.